Hi, I'm Ellen Harris from my historic district. The Kyler Brownville neighborhood, it's a little over three tenths of a square mile and has a population of 3,700. It's one of Savannah's oldest African-American neighborhoods and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1998. And this neighborhood has a fascinating history. And uh, I also was born here. You were born here? Yeah, in 1936. <laughs> That's where Deacon Reynolds' story begins, West 36th Street, in the heart of Kyler Brownville, across the street from a home that once hosted African-American leaders. Practically all of our famous preachers that came from uh, New York, Atlanta, and different places have housed in there when they came to Savannah to, uh, you know, in the early 40s, uh -huh. to uh, preach revival. Okay. And um, Martha Luther King's father spent a week in that house when he came to Savannah to preach um, revival at First African Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And as you know, First African Baptist Church is the mother church. Is that right? You know, back then in the early 40s, you know, blacks didn't have the facilities to go sure. like this. Church. So uh, First African Baptist Church would house them. Ralph Mark Gilbert, uh, Reverend Stokes, you know, they had uh, preachers that came, you know, from different areas mm -hmm. to come here in Savannah and preach revival. Across the street is the former Charity Hospital, which served the medical needs of the African American community, as well as employed a number of Kyler Brownville residents. I remember as a boy, when the people used to come from Saxville, they call it Saxville, Georgia. You know, they used to come in horse and wagon down this street to go to the hospital because that was the only, uh, George and Furman and the Charity Hospital, those were the only two hospitals that they had here in Savannah for blacks. You had the Charity Hospital right there on 36th Street. Olivia Swanson grew up a few streets away on Hardin Street. She remembers well many of the small businesses that were an important part of the community. And behind that, you had the A&P grocer, then on the other side you had another grocer that was Benny Wasso's grocer. Then next to the fish, um, the drugstore was the Elvis Fish Market. And so you had just about anything right there. You didn't have to really go out of the community. That was one community, you could almost call it a village, mm -hmm. where people knew one another, they married one another, so therefore, there was a cohesiveness in the community. There was pride in the community. There was warmth in the community. There was neighbors helping neighbors. And at Florence Street School, you had teachers living in the same community right around on 37th Street. So therefore, the teachers knew the parents, the parents knew the teachers and the children. And um, so therefore, it was a warm relationship. We all went to Florence Street School, uh, to Beach High School. So I was in a club called the Yad Suits Tuesdays Backwards because that's where uh, the day we met was on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. And um, we had little dances. Okay. And uh, the parents would be um, chaperones. Mm -hmm. Then we would skate on 39th Street it, um, we went into Ogeechee Road, it has a little hill. We all had skates and we would skate up and down 39th Street. So we really had fun. Everybody were together and every neighbor were concerned about their neighbor. Maybe if uh, you didn't have and I had, I would share what I had with you. That's, that's the way the older generation, that's the way we did it. I noticed changes when I came back. I went, I moved away in the early 60s. And when I came back to live, that was in 1985 or six. It was a drastic change. It was around the same time that Ms. Swanson returned to Savannah that Deacon Reynolds was advocating for improvements to Kyler Brownville. Floyd Adams, the mayor, gave us our first grant, mm -hmm. which was $5,000. Okay. 
What we did with that, we took that money and we bought lawn mowers, weed eaters, and we went and talked to the parents about, you know, their son. We had boys like 16, 15, 12, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes 18 years old, mm -hmm. um, an after school program. I would like to see families get closer together and um, the keeping the, uh, your property up. Mm -hmm. And because you see many vacant places mm -hmm. and the people should have pride in that community. Mm -hmm. So you will know to try to help keep up your uh, property. Mm -hmm. When your property goes down, you have ISOs. And when you have ISOs, the community goes down. I know with the association and with our elders, it was very important, but um, we tried to reach our people who lived within the community to let them know how important it was yeah. for our uh, uh, neighborhood. The Kyler Brownville neighborhood, listed on the National Register in 1998, just one of our neighborhoods, forever an integral part of Savannah's rich and diverse history. I'm Ellen Harris for my historic district.